Toy Tuesday. What is it all about? It's about fun. <laughs> it's about toys. Hello, everybody. Good morning. If it's morning time near you, good afternoon. If it's afternoon time. Got a few things lined up to look at today. But I thought... Since Iron Man was the big winner on the Home Buddies group stream, <laughs> Toy Tuesday is about Warhammer. Sometimes, I mean that it has happened. Uh, so I thought that since since Iron Man was the big winner in our armor brackets, that um, we'd look at an Iron Man. I don't have a lot of Iron Man toys left to open, but um, I do have this one. So way, way, way back when, oh boy, Iron Man 2. So a lot, oftentimes what happens with with most toys like Iron Man and such things is they'll make, like, what, do you, what are you going to do for Iron Man 2? Okay, well, you're going to make the main Iron Man armors, right? You've got the briefcase armor, you've got the, I forget the mark numbers, but you've got the final armor. But you made these molds, and you gotta get you gotta get more use out of these molds, right? So then they'll do these lines like the concept series, and what does that mean? Well, it can mean a number of things. It can mean you'll get designs of armor that weren't exactly in the movie, but they could be cool toys. So like this one here. Not exactly in Iron Man 2, at least. This purple purple suit here. And then you'll get repa repurposed molds um, with other colors and other patterns from other things. Now, they might make up something completely new, you know, again like that. Or they might take inspiration from things in the comic books. So that's always a cool thing to see. So here we have the Iron Man 2 concept series Ultimate Armor. And again, if you read the comic books, this is one of the Iron Man suits from the Ultimate Universe, which is kind of neat because here then we get, it's the movie design, it's the movie sculpt, but it's the deco of the Ultimate Iron Man. Now, let's see, the collect them all for this one. Oh boy. So we've got briefcase armor. Oh, and then all, of course, these have like a, a kid projectile launching feature. So there's a bunch of extra crap with these. So we've got briefcase Iron Man with the gigantic briefcase that shoots missiles. Uh, we've got a war machine with a launching over-the-shoulder blaster there. Uh, a couple more Iron Man suits. The drones that are made by this fella here, Whiplash. And then they come with these little cards where the... At several points in the Iron Man toy timeline uh they've tried to they've tried to make it they really tried to make it so that you can mix and match things and usually that that stuff comes off pretty poorly where like you can take the figure apart and then re-put it together with other figures this one was kind of cool they they added these cards and you could essentially stack the cards in different ways whoop, to make them into different armor variations. I'll show you. Um, I do have... I have this one, this one, this one, these, and this one. I don't I don't have Whiplash. That it just looks awful. I don't, I don't care. And I don't think I have this weird purpley one. I don't think. I might. <laughs> I might. Who knows? I assume this is just another... Gotta catch them all. Ooh, ultimate armors. Power requirements are immense, yet it can destroy asteroids and enemy fleets. Hello. And here... What is that? Okay. I have an assistant here. Yeah, and I don't know why. Hmm. I don't know why it's armor with a U. That's interesting. Hmm. 
Yeah, the Mickey, Mickey Rourke does not necessarily make for a good sculpt. Oh, and here they name them. So we've got the Mark V, War Machine. Yeah, I have Vanko over there. Ultimate Armor, Air Assault Drone, Weapon Assault Drone. So this is the Fusion Armor. I don't know exactly what that's supposed to mean. And the Inferno Mission Armor. So yeah, whenever they have silly names like that, it's like, okay, you, you either you just made this up or it may have some inspiration from the comic books. So like I said, these come with little cards. Malika, interesting. Uh, Malika is not the only person who has a connection to the Iron Man films. Uh, if you don't know, Malika was in Iron Man 3. So essentially you have you have a base plate card and then you have other cards that attach and stack to make an armor. And again, so if you had different cards from different suits, you can mix and match the different parts. And there's some like numbering code system, but it was a it's a fair it's a fair gimmick. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea where the rest of my cards are. I have I have a stack of these somewhere. But yeah, it's kind of cool. And better they do that than make the figure some kind of weird pop apart something. Uh, so anyway, Malika was in Iron Man 3. And in Iron Man 2, there's an interesting thing at the very beginning. There's a... Well, actually, I think it's gone now. There used to be a set here in Los Angeles. Um, I think it was an abandoned hospital or something. Anyway, where film crews would go and shoot in their basement. And... Would depend on what you needed to build there. You would like build a set in the basement, do your shooting, and then and then leave. And sometimes you'd abandon things behind. And so my wife was working on a shoot and built a built a room in the basement of this hospital. And then as they did, they left behind just like the the walls. And those actually became the walls of Whiplash, Ivan Vanko's um, hovel in Russia at the beginning of Iron Man 2. So my wife actually made that set <laughs> that's in the movie. I mean, the, the walls at least. All right, so we have Ultimate Armor Iron Man. Now this poor fellow has been in the package for many, many years. And so we have the usual, the usual issues with that. Take a look at those legs. They are wonky. He will never stand straight. But thankfully, he's got a lot of articulation, so I should be able to pose him in such a way that at least he can stand up and not fall flat on his face. This was actually a problem with a lot of these Iron Man toys at the time. They had... They had kind of wonky legs. He's got like this really weird torso articulation. Kind of just flops around. Again, it's based on a on a mold that we've we've seen before in the Iron Man toy line. I don't remember ex again, I don't remember exactly which mark everything is. It's all be it all gets to be a blur after five, six, seven suits. Yeah, and it, it goes so far back. Like that there's no pose where that that amount of reveal is gonna look good. I mean they want you to be able to to have him fly and lean back a little bit, but yeah, that that's too much. Uh, I do have a like I said, I do have a lot of Iron Man toys from the these movies. Hey Ernest. And as well just from this the three and three quarter inch line of Marvel figures. There were other comic book based, yeah, Mark N plus one. Uh, there are other comic book based suits in this line as well. But here you can see just a standard Iron Man and then the 
Ultimate Armor version. I think these have the same head sculpt. Looks like. Maybe. They're all very, very similar. Yeah, it's a different torso plate. I'm just trying to see if there are any shared components between these two. Not a lot. Maybe just the head. Who knows? So yeah, so we have ultimate armor. Iron Man. Yeah, and then again, like he comes with this goofy thing. I that's just gonna go in that's just gonna go in the accessory box. Oh, and so they did have display bases, which are which definitely do come in handy. And what you could do is you could mount the cards on the base. So if you had them all, they could stand there and look pretty with their with their information behind them. Again, not bad for extra extra bits. All right. What else? Let's continue with Marvel and let's get small. I don't know about all of you. I'm a fan of the Ant-Man movies. They're making a third one. I'm very excited. Ant-Man doesn't get nearly as much product support as the other heroes. That's probably okay <laughs> in the long run, but I'm always happy when, when things come out. There has been, there was an Ant-Man figure for the first Ant-Man movie. And then they made a the, the newer version of the Ant-Man suit for Ant-Man 2 in this scale. And then there's also a wasp, which I have. I believe I opened the wasp on stream. So then we got this special Marvel Studios, the first 10 year line of action figures. And this was really cool because what they essentially did with this was they gave us, oh, it doesn't show like all of them or anything, which is kind of annoying. But when it hit 10 years of Marvel movies, they went back and sort of filled in a lot of the holes in the action figure line movies where Especially things like like when Ant-Man came out, Marvel didn't really know Ant-Man was going to be super successful. Uh, they didn't dedicate a whole line to the a whole toy line to the movie because like, how many toys are you going to make from that movie? Um, yes, you can intersperse an Ant-Man or have an Ant-Man separate, but Yellow Jacket, eh, I mean, it's really specific just to that one movie. Uh, but this the ten year series, like I said, it went back and it filled in gaps in the lineup uh it we got new sculpts for some toys that had come out and weren't maybe the best and so i was very excited to pick up this ant-man set uh, it also used utilized all sorts of new technologies with these toys so as i'll i'll show you when i open it up but these head sculpts are made from 3d scans of the actors and they're incredible i mean the level of detail on these things it's like hot toys level uh, also, like these, just they just look really nice. These packages, if you if you were to buy them and somehow not open them, which I don't recommend. So what do we? We've got a lot of information here. Ant Man 2015. When the government attempts to seize Hank Pym's Pym particle shrinking technology for use in warfare, Pym trusts in the help of petty criminal Scott Lang to don the Ant Man suit and strike back against corruption. Geared up as the half inch hero, Lang must stop Pym Industries representative Darren Cross before he sells the shrinking technology to Hydra and enables them to create a new army of unstoppable shrinking secret weapons. Okay, cool. This is technically series eight. Watch out, Iron Man. Uh, Scott Lang is enlisted by Hank Pym to suit up as Ant-Man to fight against competing forces intending to use the incredible shrinking Pym particles for evil. In Yellow Jacket, the new lead of Pym Industries, Darren Cross, threatens to sell his highly weaponized Yellow Jacket suit to the criminal organization Hydra. Sure, that all sounds, 
all sounds reasonable. Yeah, Erdens, I, I, I mostly agree with that. Very few of the Marvel movies have been bad. There are some I don't really like, but even those, like, yeah, I watched them, but I, I won't go back and... I, I'm not going to go back and rewatch the first Captain America movie. That's that's the one I, I don't like. Yeah, the Luis figure is great. That, again, they were never going to make like a whole line of... Hold on, this is that. <laughs> Let me, get, let me get all these guys out and then I'll talk. This, this may be, I don't know if this is as much, maybe even more of a contention than the fact that I don't like the first Captain America movie, but I don't think Thor 2 is is all that bad at all. I actually just rewatched it just to have something on in the background, and I was like, this movie's okay. I know that's often one that people put on the bottom of their list. Okay, so we've got sort of the standard six-inch Marvel Legends figures. They're going to be highly articulated. Um, interesting. This figure is, it's pretty light. It doesn't have, doesn't have as much heft to it as a lot of the other ones do. I'm not a huge collector of Marvel Legends. I have a handful, just kind of like the characters I really like. Or that I've, you know, found on sale or whatever. Uh, they often get you with their build-a-figure lines. So there'll be, you know, a set of five, six figures, and each one will come with a piece of a larger character or just an, another character. Sometimes the build of figures are really no bigger than the regular ones, and that can be kind of irritating. So we've got standard Ant-Man here. He looks great. A lot of texture on these different suit parts, which you can see there. Just a, a lot of detail in the sculpt. <laughs> Ruiner, that is fair. Uh, yes, I would not go. I would not use the same metric for DC movies that there are no bad ones as I would say for Marvel. Yeah, that's that's a whole different, whole different thing. Yeah, this is a pretty pretty great sculpt on this figure, which is especially good because um, it doesn't really doesn't really have any accessories, right? Ant-Man's not going to have a gun or anything. I mean, I suppose they could have given him those little discs, but those would be really tiny. And you would probably lose them very quickly. So, yeah. He's got way more articulation than he needs. I mean, Ant-Man is not... MCU Ant-Man is not the most... Uh, Agile fighter or anything, but but you can do a lot with these. And interesting, a lot of these joints are actually ratchets, which is cool. So they'll hold their position for a very long time. There's, there's headache Ant-Man. Oh, the world is too much. So yeah, that's a that's a good figure. Now again, he does come with the. unhelmeted head and that again for a six inch figure that's that's really really good that likeness of Paul Rudd there they're never going to be perfect but that's as pretty close as you're going to get on a six inch figure oh the Ant-Man that would be cool the van oh especially the yeah the the later version with the quantum tunnel in the back That'd be cool. Let's see. 
Okay, so head pops off pretty easily. And oftentimes, like the one issue you'll have with these is that the, the neck might be a little bit too long. Um, there's definitely, the neck will look different with a helmet on or a head. And obviously, because if you look at the sizes, that head couldn't fit inside this helmet. So you'll get a little, well, it gets a little wonky. Although again, like I don't, <laughs> the helmets in the movie are mostly CG usually. So <laughs> not, well, I don't know mostly, but half the time. But that looks, that looks pretty good too. I will be displaying mine with the helmet. Uh, and again, these parts are backwards compatible. So if you had the original Iron Man figure, you could, or the Iron Man 2 figure, you could swap it out with the Paul Rudd head if you wanted. Um, there, oh, that was the thing. So the Iron Man, uh, the Iron Man, the Ant-Man 2 figure came with a Paul Rudd head, but it had a really silly smirk on it, which is appropriate. Um, but this one has the more serious expression. Yes, it's just it's just Warhammer and helmeted heads that I particularly don't like. All right, and then we get this really cool looking at least yellow jacket figure. So again, same same basic articulation. It's got a lot of it. I don't know all what this backpack does. Okay, so these move. Oh, it comes off. Okay, that's cool. Swapping heads all over. Janelle is clicking heads. I'm swapping heads. So these are actually translucent panels over an inner head, which is nice. You can get some cool lighting effects if you put some lights around it. Pretty standard stuff otherwise. Again, I, I, I'm i a big fan of textures on toys. I always talk about it when I do Heroclix reviews, when you get even little Heroclix figures with neat textures. So I like stuff like that. It just brings, it brings the, the toy so much more to life than just paint. Uh, they did some fun things like hiding articulation under these armor panels. That's another thing that's... It's a bit, it's a bad guy. They're all weapons. Yes. So, yeah. Again, no alternate hands or anything. So, your yellow jacket here is... He will always have one fist and one open hand. Join me. Join me. You and I together can take over the world. Whereas Ant-Man just has two grasping hands. Again, that's fine for Ant-Man. So this thing... It's got a few places where it's articulated. Oh wow, actually, kind of a lot. It's pretty cool. So you can do different things with it. Uh, the only the only issue for me that I'm immediately thinking about is when I put this on the shelf, how much room am I going to need to have around him so that these things can be displayed in a cool way? But that's fine. That's a good problem to have. Ant-Man is totally OP. Ant-Man can... Ant-Man's like the Flash. It's like, yeah, his... It, it's at, at a glance, it's easy to understand his power. Oh, he shrinks. Or, oh, he runs fast. But then if you really think about it, it's like, well, is there anything he can't do, really, <laughs> with that power? Now, of course, the thing I was most excited about... I love Ant-Man. It's great to have an Ant-Man figure. Uh, this yellow jacket is, is really cool. But what I really wanted were these. Because I love... Itty bitty, teeny tiny figures. <laughs> now I confess, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this Ant-Man. He's in a really weird pose. 
I think the way they did this is so that you might be able to seat him on some other figure's shoulder or something. But he's kind of just... He's kind of just sitting there. He's definitely not going to stand up on his own. This yellow jacket, on the other hand, might might stand up on his own. Okay. I can get him to stand. This is a, this surface is a little uneven. Yeah, that's true. I could just get I could get something else and put this put this on it. That's true. I'll figure something out. Definitely put this on display. So what else do I have with Iron Man? Like I said, I do have I do have the Marvel Legends. You know what? Hold on, let me let me grab it. So I have Wasp. Again, I don't... This is the first movie Ant-Man. So they're not quite the right... It's not quite the right display. It's not the second movie Iron Man or Ant-Man suit. I keep doing it. Not the second movie Ant-Man suit. One day I'll pick up that one as well. Because I like Ant-Man. So I've got Ant-Man, the Wasp, and Yellow Jacket. And then, let's see what else... And they are different, um, if you remember. So this, the first suit had kind of that, I don't know what you want to call it, almost looks like a like a scuba type attachment over the mouth. And then the, do I have, well here. No, that looks more like the first one. Mm, what do I have that has the second movie? Oh, uh, this one. It just kind of had a almost like a sleeker look to it, different different pattern on the on the armor itself. Okay, so we've got. Let's see. Let's let's start. The beginning. So I've got this little mini statue. This was. 2015 convention exclusive. I believe I got it at Comic-Con. It's numbered. They only made 500 of these. Yeah, it was not very expensive. Gentle Giant is sort of not around anymore. <laughs> but um, they're known for their statues and large scale... Well, mostly statues. They've done some action figures, but mostly statues. But I really liked when they did mini statues because they weren't super expensive. Uh, I also have a Rocket Raccoon that they made, but this one's neat. It's small. And again, because it's Ant-Man, you can put, I can put this next to pretty much any other toy, and it's in scale because either he's shrunken down or he's giant man version. It doesn't matter. It's so great. So I've got my mini mate from Ant Man and the Wasp. Again, it's a little harder to tell which one it is in a in mini mate form because they're so stylized. Got him a nice little running pose. I've got my Captain America Civil War Ant Man slash Giant Man. So yeah, this one, obviously from the last Avengers movie with the suit. Now again, this was one of those things. Suit didn't end up quite looking like this in the movie, right? They're bright white. Uh, this one is a dingy gray. So did they... Because this came out at launch, or thereabouts, uh, at one point in the process were the suits gray, and that's why... You know, the toy became that way because the toys had to go into production almost a year in advance. I don't know. Possibly. And again, this is this is a 
a neat size. It's a kind of a weird action figure size. It's a bit shorter than than these, but it works well as a giant man next to some of the smaller figures. And also, this one came with this kind of a shrinking effect in a smaller version, which we did a little bit of paint on. <laughs> Not a lot, a little bit of paint. So you could have that kind of thing happening. And then my Ant-Man from the Jada Toys Nano Metal Figs. Again, a little bit of, of painted detail on there, but still pretty soft. Now these were... So these were Hot Toys. Come on. So Hot Toys made full-size, 12-inch tall action figures of Ant-Man and... Yellow jacket from the first movie, and I think these were accessories that came with them. I'm not exactly sure. I I will admit that I did not buy these from Hot Toys. I bought these on the Wish app directly from China. So I don't know if these are and for a lot less than these cost from Hot Toys. Uh, they're really well done. So if these are bootlegs, they're very impressive. I suspect these are factory factory seconds. So what that means is the actual factory that makes these for Hot Toys, when, when they blow the whistle at the end of the working day and official work stops, um, some people might hang around and run a few more on the old machine and then take them out the back and then sell them in other places. So factory seconds are essentially the, the real thing, but you can get them a lot cheaper. And that's what I suspect these are, because again, they look they look great. I know they're they're bootlegs. I when Wish App first came out, I was like, I gotta try this. I gotta get something on there. <laughs> something from China that may or may not ever show up and who knows what you're going to actually get when it arrives. But I was pretty happy with these. <laughs> and then, of course, I've showed these before. Uh, from the Disneyland, Disney exclusives, they did a whole Ant-Man and the Wasp set. So here are the Ant-Man figures from that, which are pretty cool. Now, there are a lot more Ant-Man toys. At, well, a lot more. There are some more Ant-Man toys out there. These are obviously all related to the movie. They've done a few different Hank Pym's over the years in his different suits, his different incarnations. Uh, there was a... In the three and three-quarter inch action figure scale, they did an Ant-Man riding... The ant, so you get a big articulated ant toy, and then Ant-Man to ride it. Um, I didn't need a gigantic ant toy, so I, so I never picked up that one. Yeah, this one, this one's pretty neat. Focus. It's a fun effect. It's a good scene in the movie too. Yeah, so I don't have, I don't have that one. Uh, they did. They did essentially, they did a, I think it was a Build-A-Figure actually, of an Ant-Man as, as Giant-Man. Or Did they do a Build-A-Figure or was that a, a separate pack that you could get? But essentially it was this, but 12 inches tall instead of 6 inches tall. Um, yeah. There's one other thing. So this was another Comic-Con exclusive. And this one was pretty neat. Pym Technologies, Matchbook, but inside, what do you think is inside? It's a little itty bitty Ant-Man. Um, the card, it looks like a little action figure card, but that's just art. 
Oh, well, no. Hold on. Is it fully? I have never actually opened this up. Oh, no, it is. Oh, look at that. They put it on a little card. Now it's the same figure as this one. But they did a little bit better paint applications on it. And I can, I can actually see through the package he has eyes painted on there. This one doesn't. But that's pretty cute. A little bit itty bitty. Itty bitty Ant-Man card. Carded figure. Um, I don't I don't think I'm going to open this. Because again, especially because I already have the, the exact same figure. So I'll just leave it in here. It's cute. I might put this on display. My official PIM Technologies matchbook. Now, I do have one other... Let's see how I'm going to do this. One other Ant-Man thing to look at. But I am not going to open it up. I was going to open it up. And then I thought, you know what? Let me check the old eBay. See if this thing is worth anything to people. And lo and behold, it actually is. So... I might just sell this thing rather than open it. Yes, eyes are eyes are very hard to paint. Yeah, for an exclusive, you'd hope that they would do something a little bit extra. So this was back in... Was this also 2015? I'm not sure. Yeah, there is a Louis figure, but I, I sadly, I do not have it. So Hasbro at Comic-Con, love, they love to do these big figure sets, right? They've done them for a bunch of their different brands, but they're, they're really known for it with the Marvel stuff. Now, this is not movie-related, but this, it's very large, so I can sort of only show one part of this at a time. They did this gigantic Ant-Man box. It's huge. It has, it even has antenna on it that you can... Put up from the back. <laughs> there you go. And again, this is comic book based, but you get Giant Man. So this now this is this is all three and three quarter inch scale. So you've got. Hank Pym with his little science suit on, alternate head with the helmet. You've got a little itty bitty Ant Man, Hank Pym version, and Scott Lang version. You've got, uh, which one is the blue one? I always forget. And then a giant man in that scale. So this is a fantastic set. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the lab coat is a little weird on there. I do really want the little guys, but again, when I saw how much, at least the figures are selling for individually, I was like, eh, maybe, maybe I don't need it. But yeah, it's a cool set. It wasn't fun carrying this around the exhibit hall. Uh, oh, Goliath is that one. And again, these things were cool because they mixed, at the time, Hasbro was making their three and three quarter inch figure line. So you got one of those. This is essentially a, a six inch Marvel Legends toy. And this is a 12 inch Marvel Legends figure with all of the articulation stuff built into that. So yeah. And then this this version of the Scott Lang art. Ant-Man suit. I don't think I don't think there's ever been another toy of that specific look, which is kind of cool. It's a little bit different than the suits that we're more familiar with. So yeah, I don't know. I'll see maybe about selling this thing or I may end up just opening it if it doesn't work out. It's also gigantic, so like shipping on this is going to be a nightmare. Um, it's not in perfect condition. 
I, I can't imagine any of these are just because of the like the weirdness of the packaging and the weird shape and getting it in and out of Comic Con. It's like this this thing is bent right there. But everything inside is fine. Alright, so that's that's all my Ant Man toys. What's next? Oh, there's the other one. I was looking for that. Okay, let's do My Little Pony. Something really neat in the My Little Pony world. Now, you all know about the princesses in My Little Pony. Ant-Man and the NBA. Oh, uh, <laughs> you lost me with that reference. Sorry. <laughs> So in My Little Pony, you've got Earth Ponies. They're just regular. They're boring. You've got Pegasus Ponies. They have wings. They can fly. You have Unicorns. They have magic. Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves rookie Anthony Edwards. Ah, got it. Thank you for explaining that because otherwise I would have no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> but thank you, Hudsonizer. And then beyond those three basic pony types, you have the Alicorns which are the princesses. They're the most powerful, the most wise. Uh, they're in a class unto themselves. There are four of them, mostly. Princess Celestia is the ruler of Equestria. She is pretty much the oldest pony around. She's super powerful. She represents the sun Daytime, light, magic, all those good things. Her sister, Princess Luna, was her counterpart, controlling nighttime, dreams, things of that nature. Uh, she's a little bit younger, a little bit less experienced. Unfortunately, she fell to the forces of chaos, just like Horus, and she became character called Nightmare Moon. It was the evil uh, dream goddess for a long time. She was eventually redeemed, came back to being Princess Luna, but everybody is still afraid of her uh, because she was once. And over the over the time, uh, at least in the comics, occasionally she goes back to being Nightmare Moon, but then comes back. You wouldn't say most wise? Well, I mean, there are there are other ponies out there who have, who are known for their wisdom. Uh, there is a third. Well, the the first there were two, and then there was a third in Princess Cadence, who yes was one of the producers of the show named the character for his daughter and kind of stuck her in the show. But I actually really like Princess Cadence as a character. Uh, and she's one of the few characters in in the show who canonically uh, got pregnant and had a kid. So there's all sorts of things you could talk about with that. <laughs> and again, these are just different different styles from different toy lines of the same character. And then Twilight Sparkle magically was elevated to become an alicorn and a princess which was kind of ridiculous but hey how else do you make these things who knows so in this toy line they did a few like i've talked about before uh, they did a few different sets of these and they had different themes so the first theme was all about farming so you had the apple farm and a bunch of the peach characters and then in this set it was all about nightmare night which was, which is essentially Halloween in a, in Equestria, um, honoring but also being afraid of Princess Luna and her Nightmare Moon counterpart, and so all these neat things happened. So in this line, they did these, which are I'm gonna open today. So this is one of the, this was a frustrating thing <laughs> with these toys. Yeah, exactly. Little ponies have to come from somewhere, and yeah, they just.
So here we've got the Moonlight Chariot, which is a pretty cool piece of equipment here. And then you've got a, a pony to pull it. But this set didn't come with Princess Luna. So you had to find her separate, which was a lot harder to do because she was in very high demand. Thankfully, I was able to find her. All right, so what do we got here? Moonlight Chariot. The Chariot Guard wears a bat costume. Dress up for Nightmare Night. Okay. Good enough. Yeah, so this line had a bunch of ponies in silly costumes. But these vehicles are super, super neat. It's simple. It's very lightweight plastic. Um, but the details on these things are, are, are great. I love the colors. That eye is really cool. <laughs> it does have spinning wheels, so it actually will move. Got the little lights in the back. In, in theory, this should attach. Okay, good. Then we've got the guard in his little bat costume. Now this is a separate piece, so it looks like you could maybe peel that off. It wouldn't be easy to do. I would like to know if he had a cutie mark underneath, though. Doesn't look like. No cutie mark. That's okay. It does look like a shoe. And then there are little notches in his little outfit here to plug in the chariot part. Good enough. And then you can pull the chariot. Athena's birth with little ponies would be ideal. Yeah. Yeah, they don't they don't like to talk a lot about where babies come from. Although there were a, a, there were a couple of babies born in that show. So we got Princess Luna. That is a pretty great figure. The princesses, except for Twilight Sparkle, are larger and definitely more regal than normal ponies. Uh, they also, they're proportioned differently. They're not quite as chunky. <laughs> they're taller. Their limbs are a little bit narrower. So usually what happens when, when and they also have like, usually there's like a flowing effect to their hair. So they did that with these big, pretty flat pieces. So again, like she doesn't look super great from this angle, although the sparkles are cool. So you definitely want to display her from this side. So this around. And there's a hole in her foot to interact with. Now most of these figures stand up really well on their own, so I'm not too worried if I don't plug her in. Oh well, yeah, then you've got the whole scene. Which is great. And the difference in look when she's Luna versus Nightmare Moon. I mean, you could just say this is Nightmare Moon. If you wanted to. So to compare... And I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, I know I have another Princess Luna or a Nightmare Moon around here somewhere, and I couldn't find it because I wasn't looking in the right place. So give me, give me one second.
you have as many toys as I do, sometimes you lose track of where things are. The armor he covers that thing. Oh. So here is Nightmare, Nightmare Moon. Obviously in a different line when they did these larger display figures. Uh, and this was sort of like a two-part. There's also her sister, and you could arrange them so they're sort of battling. But they look great on their own. Again, more more stylized, but pretty cool. The cutie mark changes between forms as well. Yeah. When she goes back, it forms too. She also sort of de-ages. That's another way they sort of justified how Celestia is is the older and wiser and larger and more powerful because it's it's almost like at the end of Return of the Jedi, Anakin's Force Ghost, well now anyway, it goes back to being young Anakin because it sort of goes back before the Darth Vader years. So just like that, uh, when Nightmare Moon gets reverted back to Princess Luna, it sort of de-ages her back to when she was Luna at the beginning. Yeah, these these were really cool. Uh, they only did a few of these. I forget what they called. It was a different line, but um, let me grab the Celestia so we can look at that too. And again, these were sold separately. The Celestia is pretty, is pretty rad too. And again, you can display these so they're sort of battling the light versus the darkness. And these weren't very expensive either. Obviously, they, they don't move. They're just, essentially, they're just statues. Yeah. <laughs> add, add orc elements to these. Yeah, you probably could. And then, I it's few and far between. But I do have a couple of more traditional, quote-unquote, girl My Little Pony toys. Uh, and I do. I I didn't purchase this. <laughs> it did come free in a swag bag I got from Hasbro at one point. But this does have the the hair that you could brush. She definitely needs a brush. Um, I will light up the night sky. She talks. She lights up. Let's celebrate the moon. Let's fly through the night. I am. Nightmare Moon. Do you recall my legend? <laughs> it's a pretty good creepy laugh. I would love it if you styled my hair. <laughs> Less intimidating, but okay. My star barrettes are fabulous. Okay, that's a straight up rip off of the transporter sound. I will light up the night sky. Alright, and now we're back. Uh so yeah. Let's celebrate the moon. <laughs> so alright, that that completes my my Nightmare Moon slash Princess Luna collection. <laughs> I know I need styler. I know she came with she came with a little brush and a little and at least one barrette, but I don't I don't know where they are. Yeah, well I mean look, 
if you're a, a despotic ruler, you want people to do things for you. And brushing your hair, that, that counts. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why she has the transporter sound. Okay, let's see. You know what? I'm going to open one of these. So I still have a huge pile of these. It, it definitely sounds like the Star Trek transporter, doesn't it? <laughs> let's get back to it real quick. Where's the actual speaker here? Fly through the night. I am Nightmare Moon. We, we know. Do you recall my legend? Yeah. <laughs> I, I do quite like that laugh, though. I would love it if you styled my hair. Sure. My star barrettes are fabulous. Yeah, the barrettes. Yeah, I mean, it's got a little a little tinkle at the beginning, but then it, that really does sound, especially at the end, it really does sound like the Star Trek transporter. Oh, don't knock over everything. That's funny. Uh, they have, My Little Pony has referenced Star Trek, mainly because the voice of Discord is John Delancey, who played Q. So they've played with that a little bit and and done some. They've they're definitely Star Trek references in My Little Pony, especially in the comic books, where they went hard into referencing other geek properties. Talked about it much before. Micro Machines came back with the Force Awakens, and then yo Discord is cute. Yeah, yeah. They they don't even like that's that's canon. <laughs> So I have a bunch of these things floating around. Oop. These little packs were great because they were cheap. You got a handful of ships and they did they did some repaints in these lines, not a ton, but you've got the the new Force Awakens era X-wing in both Poe Dameron's colors and then the standard white and blue. Um, also, both in open and closed S foils. This one, I think, is supposed to be open, but it's it's kind of flat anyway. And then the new uh, what do they call it? Was it Special Forces Tie Fighter something like that? A little bit beefier. You can seat two people. It's got these extra donuts holding the the wings on. Big chunkier back end. Whoa. We're not having an earthquake. I just bumped the camera. And then th this was the star of this show. So we've got the the first order Star Destroyer, but with the added deco of this I don't know, atmosphere burn. I don't I don't I don't know what it's supposed to be, but at least it looks more unique compared to the other ones. So, I mean, I get the point, but I was kind of disappointed with how sleek they made these, the Star Destroyer. It does have, like, this enlarged superstructure at the top where, the theoretically, the bridge is and other stuff. But, yeah, it's a poop stain. <laughs> I don't know where they were digging this thing into. But um, I wish they had done something more with the, uh, like, the shield generators, like the old ones. That would have been cool. But obviously it keeps the, the arrowhead shape. And they even painted the engines, which is nice. Focus. There we go. Well, they painted the big engines at least. And they all have a hole on the bottom, even though none of them came with bases. Yeah, it's all oh, look at that nice that nice texture on the bottom there. I'm sure some Star Wars nerd could tell you what some of those parts actually are. I don't know. Painted. Okay, well, they did a dot of blue. Uh, that one's pretty off, isn't it? Well, they tried. They tried at least. This one has 
It's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a gap there. <laughs> Just a little. You can see right through it. And it points up in the front. It's not quite supposed to look like that. But what are you going to do? Oh, Fadier. No excuse for lazy modeling. Man, <laughs> we could definitely have a discussion about that and, and these toy companies that continue to employ lazy modeling. It's almost as though the modelers did, uh, uh, was it like, like awarding the lowest bidder? I can sculpt that toy in only 30 minutes. Well, I can sculpt that toy in only 20 minutes. Okay, you get the job. All right, look, you got to do it really fast. But yeah, there's still, there's still a disparity in quality. Some things are, are a lot better than others. But yeah, always good to open up some some spaceships. Cool. So yeah, so we've got spaceships. We've got Nightmare Knight, Princess Luna, Ant Man, Yellow Jackets. Oh, we did sort of open this up today, and then Ultimate Armor. Concept series Iron Man 2. That's pretty fun. The Monkey Jesus and Models, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could definitely look at some things that were not, not not perfect. But again, then you get stuff like this. Well, although this is just yeah, this is straight up. They scanned the actor and replicated him in miniature form so you could get your own little paul rudd he's he's dreamy hey keen cool he can hold he can hold his own head that's always fun what am i gonna do with this There we go. Cool. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out with me on Toy Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to open up that big Ant Man pack. Uh, I'm going to try to sell it. Let's see. Let's see what happens with that. It's creepy. Well, is it less creepy when it's actually on the toy, at least? Like I said, the Ant Man 2 figure comes with a like a goofy looking Paul Red head, which actually I I find that one to be creepier. But if it's on there, is it better? The wasp figure came with an unhelmeted. Uh, what is the actress's name? I forget. I also don't have it handy, but that one looked pretty good too. Better as part of the toy. That's fair. I do like how even in the, the helmeted version of Wasp, you can see through to a fair amount of her face. Evangeline Lilly. Thank you, Ardensk. I always get her name and Ava Longoria's names mixed up. That's just something in my head <laughs> for some reason. Uh, Fadier, man, one, one day not one day they won't make almost all toys in China. That'll be a good day. But that is not today. Not today. So yeah, next time, what do I have coming up? I've got a couple more Robotech action figures to open. Man, I, I wonder if the second set of those action figures is ever going to come out. It was supposed to come out, I think, in the early 2020. And it's still on. I I have it on pre-order at Big Bad Toy Store. I mean that that pre-order must be a year old at least. But I've opened up everything except for Roy and Minmay, so maybe we'll do those next time. Of course, whoa! Watch out, everybody. According to this, Roy Foker was born the same year that I was. Forgot about that. Well, at least I outlived him. <laughs> so 
So yeah, so we can open up some Robotech next time. Uh, I've got more Marvel stuff. I have a little, hmm, I have a little Vegeta toy. That could be fun to open and pull out some of my Vegeta collection. I've got a bunch of Vegeta toys. Spoilers, I know, I'm sorry, right? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> you feel old now? Well, I feel old a lot of the time, so that's okay. Uh, yeah, Harmony Gold is... Ugh. We've, ta we've, we've talked about Harmony Gold before, and then we'll probably do it again, but... Harmony Gold has the Robotech is is their is their main property. They do some other stuff. Uh, they manage a bunch of properties in and around Hollywood for some reason. That's part of their part of their deal. They make a lot of money on lawsuits, so that, that's also a thing. Uh, a friend of mine just forwarded me a a screenshot of some old horror movie. And it was the, the title card. And then at the bottom, there was a little copyright notice. And it was copyright Harmony Gold. Like, I guess they bought up some old random horror movies just to have, you know, more more stuff. Yes, we are, some of us here, we are definitely pulling up that average Twitch user age. We're, <laughs> we're bringing it into a, into a higher bracket. Um, yeah, well, that's all I got for today. Have everybody have a great day. I don't know if I have any viewers in Georgia, but if you're in Georgia, go vote. Voting would be really good today. Otherwise. Oh, yeah. Licensing and licensing and international trademark copyright law and yeah, there's there's a lot there, a lot there to discuss. But yeah, have a good day, everybody. Hopefully, we get good news with the election today. We'll see. Who knows? And I'll be back tomorrow for Warhammer. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, you know what? I should finish the Impulsors, the second kit, as well as the Impulsor parts from the Gladiator kit, so I can have all of those things done. I may do that tomorrow. We'll see. All right. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll see everybody tomorrow. Goodbye. Be excellent to one another. Be safe. See ya.